Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Dr. Akil Teher, and he has written a wonderful book called Open Heart, which chronicles his journey of having open heart surgery at the age of 61, which is how old I was about a year ago, to climbing mountains, running marathons, being an advocate for a whole food plant-based diet. Please welcome him to the show. And congratulations on just what you've been doing with your life since your heart attack. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, AJ, uh, for that kind introduction and giving me an opportunity to talk and to spread my heart healthy message from my open heart to everybody who is listening. I love it. I just love what you've done. You've taken, like my mom said, you took lemons and turned them into lemonade. <laughs> but you know, uh, surprisingly, I still believe heart disease is a leading cause of death in America for both men and women for 103 years in a row. And that means that we are now. It is killing more people than all the cancers combined. So to, in my mind, heart disease or any other chronic disease like diabetes, blood pressure, high cholesterol are man-made. If we look after ourselves, then we can easily prevent, treat, and reverse this heart dis all these diseases with just a proper healthy lifestyle change. Now, in that context, because I am old, old age is not a limiting factor in changing somebody's lifestyle for a healthier life. It's never too late to turn or change into a whole food plant-based vegan or to try a new sport, say run, jog, uh, gardening, what have you. I was 61 when I, started running. And that was after the open heart bypass surgery. I'm 74 now. And yet I'm running. And just four months back, I ran my half marathon in San Antonio with 20 other doctors. So to my fellow physicians, I implore you, I tell you, I request you, please start treating the cause of the diseases that we mentioned, rather than re treat the consequence. Because consequence can increase your lifespan, yes, but not your health span. And that is so important. We are living longer, but not healthier. And finally, to those viewers and listeners who have heart disease, let me tell you all that I am a heart disease survivor and I've been in your shoes. I know exactly where you're coming from. And if you just do the whole food plant-based diet and a lifestyle change, you can reverse all these things. So why not? So let me tell you my story. Now, I hope this story can make a difference in somebody's life, can save a life, increase the quality of the life, and learn from my mistakes. I'm an encyclopedia of mistakes. So the whole idea is that if you do listen to my story, then you can even conquer your own challenges. So what was I? I came to America rather late, you know, AJ. I came in my late 40s and I had a lot of catching up to do. So I, in trying to really go and pursue, I pursued the American dream, the so-called American dream. But in reality, I was in the reckless pursuit of fame and fortune. So I worked long hours. Trust me, I worked long hours, 12, 15, 16 hours. I gave talks to pharmaceutical companies and all that, but paying scant attention to my mental and physical health, to my family, my friends. 
So in a way, I feel that my job robbed me of the opportunity to lead a life of passion, purpose, and positivity. So here I am, till the age of 61, I was a creator of my own poor lifestyle. So what I did was, all through my adult life, I loved, I enjoyed unhealthy, rich food without worrying about the unhealthy consequences like heart disease. Like many people today, I believed it won't happen to me. So, like literally like a moth to a flame, I was drawn to meat, eggs, dairy, processed food. And like a food addict, I needed these to get my daily high. So for a while, they called me a seafood eater, S-E-E, -E, because I ate everything at sight. Be it uh, unhealthy Indian food, but, uh, unhealthy Japanese food, Chinese food, you name it, and I've eaten it. I was also a couch potato. Trust me when I say I did not know the meaning of exercise. The only possible <laughs> exercise I did was, and I keep telling this to people that don't believe me, that was sit on the couch and take the remote and change the channels. That's the hand muscles exercise I did, that is it. Or probably watch this joggers run in the park with my eye muscles. And then to top of top it's all, I had a type A personality. I was, to me, I had to have everything under control. I was very competitive and it was my way or the highway. So with all these things getting into together, I, I, I was leading a very stressful life. Now, there are a lot of people who lead a stressful life. Right now, if you think about the presidents and the CEOs, they have stressful life. They can handle stress. I couldn't. I couldn't handle stress. So therefore, there was no sort of a surprise at all that when heart disease came knocking at my door, at the age of 56. I thought of every other way of thinking that it is not heart disease and trying to get the medical this thing in my mind and say, no, this could be this is, but it was heart disease. I had to have stents and they found a triple blockage. I can't hear you. Your sound went away. Your sound just went away. Hold on. Oh. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Whew, whew. okay, good. I'm glad you saw me. Perfect. You're back. Okay, okay, no problems. So I was the triple vessel blockages. Now, two of these are were 98 to 99 percent blocked. One was the left anterior descending, which is called the widow maker. But I beg to disagree. It should be called the widower maker too because heart disease is the leading cause of uh, death in women also. So when they started doing my stents, my plaques were very thick and they had to literally use a diamond head tip to shave off the plaques. And in the process, I had a cardiac arrest and they had to shock me to get my heart beating again. So they stopped the procedure, they put me overnight, and the next day continued the procedure, but I was terribly shocked to see those huge pedal burns on my chest. Now, in spite, you know, in spite of having all these medical problems, people would have thought I would have changed, but no, my type A personality prevailed. And I put on a brave face laughing at all my medical problems and continuing my poor lifestyle, poor diet, while inside me there were tormenting thoughts that were running riots in my mind. I felt like, hey, wait a minute, I'm a doctor. I'm supposed to treat patients, not become one. 
So I withdrew from life. I slowly started withdrawing from life. In the next five years, AJ were horrendous. I would sit for long hours in a chair and stare at nothingness. I would have sobbing bouts. I would be wet with anxious thing when I would get up in the night and my PJs were so soaked. In the morning, it would take me so much time to get dressed up. And by the time I got dressed up, I was worn out. And so I literally was wondering. And at times I would get into a rage and throw things around. That was just to use my, it was just to cover up my anger with the deep despair I felt. Now these were dark energies. These were negative thoughts. They manifest, as I know in my patients, into physical symptoms. And I was a chronic constipator. There may not be a word like that, but constipator. I was a chronic constipator. Never had fiber in my life. So what does that cause? The infamous diverticulitis. Perforated twice. Twice there were holes. They admitted me. And then... I kid you not, the second time, I promise you, the surgeons were waiting in the wing to cut me open and take the disease colon out. But I, I discussed with my colleagues and other GIs, and thank God I did not get it done. I also had an enlarged prostate by now, and I was having bleeding and acute retention of the urine, and they had to put huge catheters to take out those clots which for 24 hours, which was like piercing an iron rod into your genitals. I was at rock bottom. And at one point in my life, I thought of ending it all. So there was no surprise now that my stance failed. I got re -stenosis and I had to have open heart surgery. I was so tired now that I wanted to change. And I had only two options. One was to continue the sedentary, mediocre lifestyle that most of my patients after surgery did, heart surgery, or to start making a lifestyle change, incorporating mainly incorporating me diet, but with exercise, meditation, yoga, sky breathing. I could have sat on my rocking chair, retired, lived vicariously through my children and grandchild, and wait for the inevitable death. But I chose to live and to live life to the fullest. I had to make this come back into an opportunity. So this was a superb moment in my life. This was the, what you call the, the transformation point, uh, you know, and it was an inflection point, a reflection point in my life. So as they carried me, and I can still remember, I can still remember so vividly, as they carried me to the surgery room, I just looked at the nurses and I said, look, I'm going to do a half marathon in a year's time if all went well. And they laughed, they smiled, and some of them thought maybe it was the infused anesthesia talking. I don't blame them. But trust me, when you make up your mind, everything changes. Your mind controls your body. My recovery was remarkable. On the third day, I was on the treadmill. And then I did not take a single pain medication after that, even with the excruciating chest pain, um, with that horrendous cough. Only people who had the heart surgery can tell you that. But you know what? And a lot of people have told me not to say this, but this is the truth. I found pain a pleasure in contrast to the physical and mental agony that had gone in the last five years. So I was elated. 
I was looking forward to my life now. This was a second chance given to me. And I'm not going to let it go. I'm not going to let it go. So I said, wait a minute. I've got to get ready. I've got to do that half marathon. Now imagine, you have a sedentary slob who has not even done one kilometer in his life, who has spent half his life sitting on that couch or going to work. So I had to literally learn how to walk as a baby does. I had to shuffle and jog and run, but patience paid off. I literally started enjoying running. And then AJ, it became a superb thing. It became to me meditation in motion. And then came the words of that, oh God, I forget his name. Um, that Irish Middle East, middle uh, distance runner. He said that, uh, you know, uh, running is uh, like uh, what, uh, running is a classical road to self-caring, self-awareness and self-reliance. And to me, it all met in the right place. I was enjoying the birds chirping, the waterfalls, the smells of the soil, and even those uh, uh, squirrels rummaging for food was uh, great uh, sounds to my ear. So I was doing great. And then came the day when I had to go for my uh, half marathon. My wife accompanied me. And there was literally, it was a six hours drive, but there was a dichotomy of fear and excitement. More so fear, but also excitement. And we reached there. And you know, I, I somehow remember this, that I could not sleep till 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. And I got a dream, a vivid dream, that I am representing my country in Olympics. And I'm getting a medal. And I'm starting to sing the Star Spangled Banner totally out of tune. And there I am. And then the next morning, I go up to the, the thing and I see hills. I've never seen hills before in my small town, Gadsden in Alabama. And I saw these hills and I said, got to do this? Okay, if you can't beat them, join them. So I continued my, it took me three and a half to four grueling hours to complete that race. But you know, Chef, AJ, my bruised heart did not fail me. It carried me physically and figuratively to the finish line. And so I was now on a new path, but I still had my problems, not that many. I still used to get some diverticulitis attack, not serious enough to put me in the hospital, but I still got those. And my sinuses and my bronchitis. And uh, so I was wondering, I was eating right, not a vegan or a vegetarian yet. So I said, I'm eating right. I've become a, I'd become a flaxitarian. I ate more of vegetables and fruits and very little of meat. But then I said something, I may be doing something wrong. Am I doing something wrong? Why am I not? I'm doing everything else. Then it dawned on me. And I started reading. And I started reading my colleagues' works, T. Collins and uh, Neil Bernard and everybody else. And I said, wait a minute. It's the food. Diet is more important than exercise. And so I started from a flexitarian. I became a pescatarian, eating fish. Then I gave up eggs. Then I gave up dairy. And then finally, I gave up fish. But here is something I want the listeners to listen to. I became a vegan, but a junk food vegan. And a junk food vegan is as bad as putting a flesh of an animal in your mouth health-wise. Because 
cruelty to animals and climatic, you are still great. But health wise, you are done. So I became a junk food vegan. And then from that onwards, I started and became a healthy vegan. Then I realized when I became a healthy vegan, my long distance running or any long, uh, any uh, profound activity, I realized that my preparation time, my uh, recovery time, my performance time all decreased. I was worried about uh, protein and all that like other people, but I game changers and all I read and, and I saw the movie. So I said, now is the right time to uh, do something and really figure out. So when I did my 100 mile bike, ra bike ride in Mobile, Alabama, somehow it was an odd day, it does not happen. I think it was November or December, but it was extremely cold. It was 31 degrees and there were gale force winds and cross winds. And it took me and my trainer nine and a half hours to finish that 100 mile bike ride. And as we were going back to my small town gets and I get a call from my office manager, there's no doctor tomorrow, Dr. Teher, would you be able to come and work? And I said, okay, sure. Now here is a nine and a half hours, six miles, six hours going back to my town and next morning do a 10 hour shift like a normal day, nothing changed. So such is the power of a whole food plant-based diet. And with this, I would like to show just three or four slides, if I may, and okay. share the screen. Please, I just want to quickly ask you a question. Sure. Uh, Susanna wanted to know if your wonderful book is available on Audible because she loves the sound of your voice. Oh, boy. I, I wish I could do that. But I, uh, Susanna, uh, I will try and look into this and see if I can do something in the near future. But I don't have it at the moment. Okay, great. You, you know, I just before I forget to ask you, one of the things that I found really compelling about your stories, you mentioned when you were when they used the paddles on you. Yes. And, and you actually had burns on your chest. Yes, because they shave up the hair. Did, did they ever go away? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But to me, it was a shock. What did they do to me? Uh, so I mean, they, I, what is it like? What does it feel like to get those paddles? I don't know, because I was not aware. I was under and my heart had stopped. So oh. I had no idea except in the morning when I saw this and I said, what it is? What is it? And I even joke with the nurses. Now I don't have to go out in the sun and get tanned, you know. So, oh. <laughs> but uh, that was that was it. It wasn't, I didn't know. That's incredible. Did, did it hurt though, the burns? Did you have pain from the burns? In the mornings, yes. It was stinging and all that. But, you know, I was very far into my misery to think of anything, you know. I said, I, I think possibly I may have thought, why did I wake up at that stage? Yeah, so that you could help millions of people hearing your story. And I think one of the best parts of your story is we know we can reverse heart disease, but you're showing it's never too late. Never too late. Never too late. I did it at 61. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. So <laughs> the point is that I wanted to share the screen so that people understand what I'm talking about, you know. So let us go on here. This is my slide, because let people understand, listeners, viewers, that your coronary artery takes blood to the heart and the heart pumps the blood to different organs of the body. So here you have a cross section of a coronary artery and here is a lumen, the passage where the blood flows. Now, remember this endothelial cells, the inner lining of every vessel in your body, 50 miles, uh, uh, 50,000 miles of arteries and veins, which are there in your body. This nitric oxide keeps the lumen dilated, coronary artery dilated, keeps the blood flowing smoothly and protects the artery wall. Now, what happens if you eat a standard American diet of dairy, eggs, meat, carbonated, sugary drinks like you have here, or a junk food vegan diet, which oil, processed food, saturated fats, and sugar, 
what really happens. It destroys your endothelial lining. No more nitric oxide. So what happens? Those culprits that are waiting in the wings, the cholesterol, the fibrin, the calcium are now out in the open to form plaques. And these plaques that are formed over here, it takes decades to form. And it keeps narrowing the lumen until you start getting chest pain on exertion, which we doctors call it as angina. Now think about this. In an angina, you take years to form the plaques, but new blood vessels start forming around here. And these blood vessels go distally to supply blood to the heart. So these collaterals keep blood flowing. And you're never devoid of blood flow. Let me give you an analogy. It's like a raging stream. If you've got a raging stream and you want to stop it, you take bricks or pebbles or stones and start putting on each side and come in the center. But water has its own way of going under the stones, above the stones, sidewards, and go forward. Similarly, the collaterals keep on getting the blood forward and therefore there is very little chance of getting a heart attack. This is very important for, the, for my uh, uh, audience to understand because there is hope if you've got angina and you don't have to go into open heart surgery or stents. But now beware, if you are having a heart attack, that's a different issue. These are soft, friable clots that can break open and form an emboli. They block certain part of the heart. And this is a heart attack when 50% die with the first heart attack. As I always tell my audience, you get a typical heart attack, the Hollywood type or the Bollywood type. You're in a crushing chest pain and you're going on the floor and you're dizzy, you're diaphoretic, sweating. And, uh, and, and your, your fingers should go to 911. You should go to the emergency room. They, they do the EKG and the blood work. And they find, find that you're having a heart attack. They take you to a cath lab. Boom, boom, boom. They remove the clots. And if that, they start putting the stents, and if that does not work, you've got to have bypass surgery. This is an emergency. So this is a right course. But what did, what did I have? I had angina. And so I could have had other options. So let me make a bold statement on your show. Had I known then what I know and understand today, I would have looked for other options besides stents and surgery. Because here is is this a miracle or can this be done? You are reversing coronary artery disease with lifestyle changes in diet by a low fat, whole food, plant-based, no oil diet. This is Dr. Asselstyn's patient, his colleague. He, he was a, a surgeon and you're, you are aware of it. And this person, look at his coronary before, moth eaten, rat tail type of a, with blockages. And in three years time, you have this without surgery and uh, bypass, surgery or stents. Because in America or world, in the world, maybe more than that, but in America, we have got 50% of stents and bypass surgeries, which are not necessary. And so I would always like to tell the audience, the listeners, I'm not asking you to straight jump on to a whole food plant-based diet, but ask your physician, become involved in your care. Ask him, are there other things that I can do? Can I go to Dr. Esselstyn? Because instead of take, spending hundreds and thousands of dollars, you're getting it done for less and you're not destroying your endothelium. But what happened to my, my patients? Oh, doc, I feel great now after the surgery. What happens to your brain arteries? And I found one thing with my younger patients. If I tell them they're going to get a heart attack if you don't mm, stop doing what you're doing, they don't care. But if I tell them you're going to get impotent, 
because your arteries are there in your penis, they listen to me. And so with this, I would like to end and say that let's all follow the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. It's so important. Basically diet or whole food plant-based is the most important because it is most difficult, but even gives you rewards. Number two is exercise. Third, it should be a prescription by every doctor. You should write a prescription that look, 30 minutes, five days a week in stress-free environment. Number three, sleep, seven to eight hours. I still get about five to six hours. I'm still working on it. Stress, as I said, stress everybody has. How are you going to relieve stress? You're going to use crutches? I use crutches like meditation and yoga and what have you. Then is your uh, social support. Giving social support or taking social support is in itself therapeutic. And finally, avoid drugs or um, uh, smoking that are addictive. And one final thing is about alcohol. So far, lifestyle medicine stated that responsible drinking is okay. We don't advocate drinking, but responsible drinking is okay. But the, in the last three weeks or a month, they've done a really important study. I think it came out from Harvard that even mild drinking can cause uh, your risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So I have to learn that too, because I drink four, three to four ounces of wine every day. But if that is a thing, I have to learn. And that is my end. And thank you so much for letting me be on your show and pouring my open heart out. Oh, thank you, doctor. That was wonderful. I'm sure people want to know, are you practicing medicine today? Do you see patients? I'm doing telemedicine right now but I'm thinking of going back into uh, physical presence very soon. If you'd like to take the screen share off, we can see you large. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm, oh, no, I'm, that's okay. Just, uh, we want to see you. Uh, yeah, a lot, every, everybody is really loving the sound of your voice and asking for the book to be available on Audible. Oh, I've been told this, you know, when I was working for a corporation, Corporate Health Dimensions from New York, and uh, the lady who was uh, the CEO, she came one day to my town to visit me and she just walked past because I'm a five foot four, 120 pounds. And she says, where is Dr. Taher? And then somebody pointed out that is Dr. Taher and said, this is Dr. Taher? He's got a louder voice than his other statement. You know? So I don't know, it just. That, you know, you mentioned about the research on alcohol. I'm trying to pull it up for you right now. But uh, the research I got from Dr. Stefan Esser was that it's terrible for brain health. It's just that it's no amount of drinking is good for brain health. And I'm going to try to find the article that was recently published. I believe it came out of uh, England. But uh, yeah. It's absolutely true. I, I absolutely agree with that, doctor. And uh, it is, I don't advocate it to any of my patients anymore even mild drinking. And uh, I've been asked, so I've been very honest and said, yes, I am. That's me. Yep. No, that's very good. Okay. Yeah. People say your voice is mesmerizing. <laughs> <laughs> you might have a whole new career as a voiceover actor before we're through with you. I, I, should, I don't know. Maybe that, uh, I don't remember names now, but okay. But my, my uh, uh, nephew is an actor. In Evil, he comes, if you've seen Evil, he's one of the main characters. Nice, nice. So when you made your transformation, did you keep in touch with any of your original doctors and are they aware of the success you had reversing your heart disease? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, very difficult. I just took a, a bunch of doctors on my 27th, uh, 27 March on my uh, 74th birthday and I took them, it was in Sedona in Arizona. And I took them and I, they asked me, what would I like for my birthday? And I said, all I want you to do is come and join me with a vegan meal around here. 
And then there's a great restaurant, Chocolate Tree. It's out in the open and beautiful ambience. And I took them over there. And after finishing, not a morsel was left on the plate. And they all said, oh my God, I didn't know that vegan food tasted this good. So that was the thing that I, I try to lead by example, but sometimes I myself fall off the wagon. But uh, more or less, I am now a healthy vegan, period. Nice. Well, we are happy to have you. Do you have a niece named Sheila? No. You don't have a niece named Sheila Ames? No, no, no. She called me uncle. Oh, okay. I was thinking, you see, because what happens, uh, uh, AJ, that in India, if you are an older person, you're always called uncle. So even when I ran the Mumbai Marathon, out of respect, this runners, younger runners would say, no, no, uncle, you have your water first. We'll have it later. Nice. Well, she is watching live and she has a question and she wants to know, how does oil and these other things actually decrease the nitric oxide or is it that they contain little to no nitric, nitric oxide, whereas vegetables do contain it? No, I believe that once you, when, when you are processing uh, uh, whether it is olive oil or whatever, when you process that thing, then it becomes uh, refined and processed. And then it starts hurting on the endothelial cells. If you just have olive oils or if you have almond without the almond oil or whatever, that is okay. But that is not okay for people like me because we've got heart disease. So we should be abstaining from... Uh, fats in any form, but endothelial cells is, uh, is uh, oils have been notoriously famous for destroying them because otherwise in India, there are 75% people who are vegetarians and vegans, but we are the heart disease capital of the world. Yep. When you went vegan, did your family join you and did you inspire any of your colleagues that were medical doctors to take a look at what they were eating? Yes, yes. For, first, my family. Uh, we all do it for different reasons. I did it for health reasons. My daughter and my uh, wife uh, did it uh, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, because of cruelty to animals and animal rights. And my son uh, still is not, but he's a very big flexitarian. But we are trying to sort of get him there. But it'll happen. Your it'll book happen. your book has been endorsed by some of the heavy hitters in the plant-based world, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, Dr. Kim Williams, the former uh, president of the American College of Cardiology, Dr. Neil Barnard. Um, I'm curious if Dr. Esselstyn is familiar with you and your work. I don't know. But Kim Williams said, a, you know, remember what he said, that every death is inevitable, but let it not be your fault. Exactly. Okay, uh, here's a question from Sue Ellen. Do endothelial cells grow back when you follow a whole food plant-based diet? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Your endothelial cells are now regenerating because of the, uh, the food that you are taking and now start producing the nitric oxide. That is the reason with, which I showed you that uh, last slide where you had the coronary artery completely dilated. Got it. So give us an idea of like what you eat in a day. Well, I, again, to be very honest, I am not a very good cook, but I try. So I keep it very simple because according to my wife, if I try something very, uh, this thing, then it goes all bad. So uh, what I do is keep it simple. So in the morning, our, my distinct duty is to get every fruit or certain vegetables like celeries and carrots and all that and put it into a blender and with the ginger as well as uh, the, um, uh, again, arugula, whatever you have with pears and all the other fruits. And I do this every single day with uh, flax seeds and chia seeds in it. Once that is over, 
Then when I'm thinking about breakfast, because I do three miles of running at least five to six days a week. So once I, this is before the running, once I finish running and I come for my breakfast or my brunch, so to speak, then I will start having, like I like earthy because I still miss those steaks and all that at times. Because I had to train my test taste buds to uh, a few thousand taste buds to really like what I'm eating. And I've trained them, but I still miss so earthy things like say, uh, you, you are a chef, you laugh at me, but I take spinach and I put mushroom and make a burger out of that. And then of course you have uh, all these uh, lentils and beans and soups that we make. And uh, Ezekiel bread is my favorite. Even the wraps are fantastic. So I do that for lunch at times and evening, of course, whatever vegetables my wife can lay her hands on, we do that and uh, enjoy. I, I, I've never felt better or I've never, you know, distension, burping, reflux, all that is in the back burner now. That's fantastic. Your, is, your, is your gut health okay now? Because you, you, you refused all the interventions, right? Yes, yes. It is, it is so far touch wood. Uh, so far, it is not. But again, you know, uh, AJ, I don't know what is going to happen tomorrow, but I am enjoying life. I'm only 12 years old. Because at 61, I, I started a new life. So 61 to 74, I'm 13 years old or something. So I love it. But who knows tomorrow? Right. Mary Beth wants to know if you also follow a low salt diet. It is advisable to use only the spices and uh, things that are not salt driven. But I don't. I use less salt, but I do use salt in my diet. Do you use an instant pot to make your food? Yes. That's yes. enough. That's, a, that's a good. But there's another thing that I found. I don't know whether you, you must be knowing it, but uh, for the uh, viewers, I found a compost by Vitamix. It is superb. I wish, you know, because it has cut down my garbage to uh, uh, almost half. And I can now use a knife instead of going like this. I can use this because I'm chopping every day to put into that thing. Every night it goes in. And I get a lovely compost for my garden, which I, which I learned it during the COVID period when I was isolated. The two things I learned, I learned how to do gardening, a little bit of cooking, and it gave me time to write my book. Yes. So it was, it was somehow, to me, it was a blessing in disguise. I know for a lot of people it is ruined, but to me it was. That is fantastic. I see a question from Dina. What do you think of phytosterol supplements made with flax oil and plant sterols to lower cholesterol? Are they safe to take if a person has high cholesterol but no heart disease? Yes, but if you got high cholesterol, in my opinion, with a whole food plant-based diet, you are going to bring down your cholesterol, totally. And I also tell you this uh, sterols that you're talking about and taking, they're not going to harm you. They may not be beneficial, but they're not going to harm you because they're plant-based. So it is okay, in my opinion, to take those, but moral, in, I would say use the whole food, plant-based uh, foods, then in that case, you do not have to use your cholesterol uh, lowering medication. And one, one other thing that I would like to tell people who are on cholesterol medication, statins especially, do not stop it suddenly. Go on a whole food plant-based diet, check your things after three or four months. And if your cholesterols are going on, reduce your dose asking your doctor. And then you can eventually, because I am not taking a statin anymore. 
and I had extremely high cholesterol. Again, I was not obese, but I had visceral fat. So, so it, we South Asians tend to have a lot of visceral fat, which is directly related to heart disease. So if you go to India, you'll not find people obese, but they have fat in the gut. So this is where we, we find that uh, if you look at the South Asian population, everybody is, uh, so we can, we can fall through the tracks, uh, uh, through the cracks if we go to a regular doctor, because my body mass index was 23 when I got heart disease. So I, I, they would have said, okay, you're not fat, but it is a subcutaneous fat that is a healthy fat. Yeah. Not the visceral fat, which is all in your liver, around the heart, in your muscles, and that's a bad fat. But coming back to the question about the steroids and all that, I think as long as it is plant-based and there are no processed or refined things in it, and I also tell people this, that if you read the labels and you can't pronounce something, don't eat it. It's a rule of thumb. You can't pronounce, don't eat. So I tend to do that. That is very good advice. Kitty has a question on what do you think about food addiction in America? Well, food addiction in America is based on, on uh, improving your social status in terms of monetary status. You see, because it becomes, even in India, for example, it has now become a rich man's disease. And the poor who are now, since India is coming up so much, they start following them because they got money now. And money can buy you things that they always wanted. So they would go around and get these meals from McDonald's and all, which they've never had in their lives. And they never had heart disease. But I think it is basically money that makes you want these foods that are around. And, 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 I, and I believe very strongly that there's so many diets that are around, but they all are, you know, it is always to look good, not feel good. So you are restricting your, um, you're restricting your calories and all that to, to look good. But a whole food plant-based diet can make you look good as well as feel good. So we are more or less going into the trends of just doing what the Jones do and what the rich people do. We want to follow that. And that is a classical thing that is hap happening in India right now with the oil, which is, we are, we have a cultural connection to oil, we Indians. You know, if your, if your pot of curry does not have a layer of oil as thick as a Valdi slick, you are not doing justice to your guest. So I believe that, uh, it was, you know, then and then it becomes that people want to then uh, start eating and then throw up and get bulimia. And I've seen patients like that. And that's a vicious circle. So it is always to look better what, what uh, the people say. Okay, you're going to be thin, so you start. And no. A whole food can do everything that, that you so desire. Yep. There's a question from a live viewer. If you ever looked into macrobiotics. Yes. I am not a believer of uh, probiotics. No, macrobiotics. The macrobiotic diet. It's um, Cushy, Cushy Institute. Yeah. Uh, can, can you tell me a little bit more about well, I, it? I'm not an expert in it. I've had chefs on it. I know that it's, it's, if they eat seasonally, uh, it's, they eat a lot of whole grains. So I, I don't know. It's a macronutrients and all that. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I don't know about it. So I will not be able to, I, I can look up, 
look up and get back to the person? No worries. What was it? Macro? Yeah, they, there, there's a cruise, the holistic holiday at sea, and there that is a they call it a macrobiotic cruise. Some macrobiotic people eat fish, but you can be completely plant based on it as well. But before I forget, I want to thank Susan for her super chat donation. Thank you so much. Macrobiotic. I got to look into that. I got to learn. Yeah. Macrobiotic. Yeah. So a lot of people do it. And uh, oh, Dina says she just purchased your book on Kindle. Congratulations. I think you'll love it. I've been posting the link to get the book in the show notes as well as the chat. So that's pretty cool. Do you ever I just wish you had learned this sooner? <laughs> oh, I learned it sooner? Of yeah. course. Of yeah. course. I'm way behind. It's never too late. But I believe that atherosclerosis starts at a young age of 8 to 10. And they've done studies in Sudan and all that, the American soldiers and uh, others, the Africans. And the same age, 163 people, 163 of the American soldiers. And we had so many of them having uh, atherosclerosis in the postmortem, while only one of these 163 had a uh, atherosclerosis because they were living on roots, maize, barley, and vegetables. See, that is the thing that really makes me wonder that if you have the people in the village or small towns who are eating the right kind of food because of non-availability of the so-called uh, unfriendly or rich unhealthy foods, they are doing great. Because we have covered what did they die of in the olden days of infectious disease. Of course, we have got this big COVID thing coming up. And I believe that uh, just to, uh, I'm sidetracking a bit, but please, everybody in the audience should get the vitamin D checked. Because there was a small study done about uh, one year back where they took uh, 25 people uh, 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 there were 50 uh, people that were taken for this study, and it was uh, a blinded study. So this uh, 25 people were severe enough COVID to be admitted in the hospital. And out of the 50, 25 were given high doses, 50,000 units of vitamin D, and the other 25 were not given any vitamin D. The people who were not given vitamin D, seven of them landed on the ventilator. Well, the people who are given high doses of vitamin D, only one landed on a ventilator. So please check. This is a personal story I'm telling you. When the COVID hit, I isolated myself for about two to three months. I went and got my vitamin D checked. Normal is 30 to 100. Mine was, and I can show you the results, was six. Because the Way, the best way to get vitamin D is sunshine. Not sitting on your at home and getting through your window pane. No, that ultraviolet ray does not give you the vitamin D. The best way to get it is 15 to 20 minutes of being in the sun, in that sun that is about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, not very harsh. And that should give you enough vitamin D, which is much better than taking supplements. But because of the situation, please take the supplements. Because I've not seen one single person in my 40 years of practice ever become vitamin D toxicity. So please, please check your vitamin D. It is paramount that you do that. And for uh, darker individuals like I am, you to be a little bit more in the sun as opposed to the whites who need less to be in the sun because we take longer time to absorb the vitamin D. And if you're taking vitamin D supplement, there is plant-based and take the D3, cholecalciferol. Oh, is it cholecalciferol or ergocalciferol? Sorry, ergocalciferol, D3. Nice. I saw I got sidetracked, you know, but it was an important message I had to. That's okay. Dina says you look really good in your 70s. I believe you said you were 74. Do you have any before photos? 
I, I do, do have before photos, but uh, uh, yeah, right now, I will have to look into it and I'm not very good at this media thing. So, I mean, I do have photos uh, before and uh, I was never obese. I was never uh, this thing, but, but I was, I was just a person who did no exercise or only did was work, work, work. And that's a nice thing that I always feel at the back of my mind, I was always good to my patients. And I was always good to my patients, but in the bargain, I was not good to my friends and family. And mm. Susan wants to know, this question is asked is, if I have high cholesterol, does that mean I also have plaque? And can a Whole Foods SOS-free diet get rid of the plaque? And is a coronary calcium CT scan recommended? Uh, okay, the last question first. The coronary calcium scan should be done by everybody who is over the age of 45, 50, who have a strong family history of heart disease. And that calcium score, which the doctors will let you know, will let you know whether now you need to do further studies or not. Like angiogram, stress test, all that. But a coronary uh, calcium angiogram should be done by anybody who has got no high cholesterol, no blood pressure, no diabetes, but has a very strong family history of, uh, uh, of heart disease. Number two, there is not a single, I mentioned in my book, there is not a single case that has been reported. I don't know if there has been, but not to my knowledge. If you have your cholesterol, total cholesterol under 150 and your bad cholesterol under 70, there is extremely less chances that you can ever get heart disease. Third question. Yes, if you got high cholesterol and you are on a whole food plant-based diet, your cholesterol should come down. But remember, it should be low fat, whole food, plant-based, no oil diet. That beginning of low fat is because, like Dean Ornish and all they say that, okay, you can have nuts. But for people who've got a heart disease, no. People who've got cholesterol, bringing it down because cholesterol is made by the body. We don't need any outside cholesterol. I am the biggest maker of cholesterol. I can, I can smell a chicken and get cholesterol. So my idea is that I am, uh, the, the question is that yes, the whole food plant-based diet, and it depends again on the age. <clears throat> if my, say my, take for me as example, if I go to my physician and my physician says, Oh, you've got uh, 140 total cholesterol, but your bad cholesterol is 80. I think you should be on your on a, a statin or other drugs. I would say no, because at my age, 74, as I explained to you in the, uh, the, the slides, the collaterals are already formed. And the best test that I have is a stress test when I do three miles on my treadmill at times when the weather is bad. And I don't have any chest pain or shortness of breath or anything. So you don't go by numbers only, but they say less than 150, less total, less than 70, uh, bad cholesterol, no way. You can get a heart disease. Perfect, thank you. What's your next... Uh... A big adventure. You ever want to climb Mount Everest, for example? Uh, I think it's a bit too late. I I was invited to go for the base camp, which I may do it in the future. But uh, I am taking a group of uh, fifteen people in uh, October uh, from Atlanta, who are all plant based on a half marathon. But the criteria is it should be plant-based to join the group. That is terrific. Here's a question from Sunita. 
My friend's dad had two heart attacks, three stents put in. He is slim. They said it was stress related, but he's still on Plavix medication. His hand trembles and he is facing memory issues. Is these side effects of the medication? Well, Plavix, I don't know why they are still continuing this. Because if you've got stents, your Plavix is given to you for a year. And then it is stopped gradually. But uh, in this particular case, that gentleman is very much like me. I was not obese. He's not obese. So he, he definitely is he not having him in front of me and not examining him. Uh, why his tremors are there? Is it because of essential tremors or is it due to Parkinson's tremors? We, we, we've got to do a lot of work on that aspect. But having twice uh, stents, and how old is he? Didn't say. She did not say. Okay. So the, the trouble is that if you are if you are of that age, whatever the age is, if you start following a uh, uh, a low fat whole food plant based no oil diet, it should make a difference even now, mm -hmm. because it does not only it's not the heart disease or the chronic disease, even cancers, Alzheimer's, dementia, all this is taken care of. Yep. So I think that even if you don't, even if you want to take your medications, what is wrong in trying a, a healthy diet? Right. Keep taking your medication. Your doctors will say, oh my God, something is wrong. Why has your cholesterol become so low? Yep. Doesn't, won't hurt. Uh, Jojo says, I have type 1 diabetes. I brought my total cholesterol down from 6.6 .6 to 3.7 with a whole food plant-based diet. I'm 52. Should I still take statins? No. In my opinion, you should not be, if you're so 3.5 or something, your hemoglobin A1C, you said, there is no way on earth that you are. You are completely, as we said, you do not have diabetes now and you are never going to have diabetes. They have, they say that if you are diabetic, you should be taking statins to protect your arteries and your blood vessels. You're not diabetic. So we have to think about the side effects of statins and chemicals, whatever it is that if you can avoid, avoid. That does not mean that conventional medicine does not have a place. Conventional medicine is a very big place in uh, medicine to also, but not for chronic diseases. Hey, uh, uh, you're, you know, I'm calling her your niece, but you know who I mean, Sheila. Do they call, do they call the females aunt? You said they call the males uncle. Do, do, do the females get called aunt? Uh, yes, auntie. Auntie. She um, she's, wants to be on the show. She's apparently had some really wonderful transformations in her health as well. She's a lovely person. Lovely person. I talked to her at length and she is very... Uh, the passion is there. I think people should, has lost the, this thing of passion. I mean, do the things and let people follow you by examples. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are doing a great job. I mean, look at you. you. I believe your two brothers are doctors. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. My uncles, all my cousins, my grandfather. It's like, it's if you're not a doctor in the family, you're pretty much cast out. <laughs> Well, my son is also a doctor, but he had to have my daughter be a attorney to protect us. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. Um, Dina says, are you saying that if a person is on a whole food plant-based diet and is active at the right weight, but cholesterol is just under 200, we should stay away from nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives? If you want to bring down your cholesterol, the lower, the better. I never if eat any of those things. That's why my cholesterol is so low, I think. You're, if you are going to want it to be under 150, you got to give up your nuts. And uh, again, it has a beneficial this thing. I'm not saying that nuts are bad for everybody. But uh, if you got the bad cholesterol that uh, high, I mean, the total cholesterol that high, and you don't know your bad cholesterol, you should be uh, getting it down. It should be. 
in my opinion, yes, you should not have nuts that many. You can splurge once in a while. Yeah, I'm not good at splurging because once in a while becomes every day for me. So I this is this is me. This is me. I, and what a great this thing. You, your uh, story is fascinating. I went through all your. Oh boy. Oh, thank you. Um, Jojo says her HbA1c is six point two, so it's thank not three point seven. She said her cholesterol, total cholesterol, was wondering if three point seven, she should be hypoglycemic. So she's saying her HbA1c is 6.2. 3.7 was referring to her total cholesterol. Yeah, but again, uh, 3.7 is the British. Uh, is, she, is she in the U.S.? I don't know. Where are you, Jojo? Yeah, I'm telling everyone to start calling me Auntie AJ because they say that <laughs> if you're over 50, so you guys can call me Auntie AJ or Auntie Chef AJ. Yeah, that's funny. I love that. I love your culture. I, I've had so many people from India on the show. You know, they have a whole college of lifestyle medicine in India. Correct. Correct. The, the Indian College of Lifestyle Medicine. Yeah, but, but you see, 80% are not following it. Right, but the ones on the show do. <laughs> Hopefully the ones I had on the show do. But then we are preaching to the choir. Yeah, exactly. Well, hopefully, you know, you never know who, who you're going to inspire, right? Correct, and correct. It, Absolutely. It, and I'm so thrilled about these questions, you know. I'm very happy that people are so involved in it. But a 6.3, even I was wondering at that time, and she said 3.6, but 3.6 to convert it into our uh, American standards, I cannot do it on top of my head. So if she can give me the, say if it is 160 or 180 or what her cholesterol is, but uh, this is the British system that does the 3.8s. And so I, I don't really know the numbers, but if anything that you can bring down cholesterol to the lowest level, up to 150 and below, the better it is for you. Yeah, that's fantastic. You said that you your son was a doctor and does he follow the, this way of eating as well? No, I, I think I mentioned, uh, AJ, that we are trying to convert him. He's a very healthy person. I mean, he is exercising and this and looking after his health, but still he has to have that little bit of animal protein. Mm. What, what kind of, doc, what was his medical specialty? He's a, he's a, a hospitalist. Now, um, is he in the United States? Yes. In well, Atlanta. Has he yeah. seen game changers? He doesn't need a little bit of animal protein. I know. I know. And I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Okay. Send him over here. I'll, I'll, I'll school him in. I'm just kidding. But that's, that's. Uh, sure. Sure. You mean, uh, but that is what it is. And I'm so, see, it, it has to be there sometimes, AJ, because I saw my wife and daughter stop. And when my daughter's uh, wedding, you know, in India, this thing, the weddings go on for, in, in US Indians, the weddings go on for three days. And therefore we have to go around to restaurants to try and taste food. And that is non-veg too, because they're going to be, and this is years back. and they would come around to taste the food, but not only vegetarian. So even in the wedding, in her wedding, she has not tasted food. So 25 to 30 years, but it did not register. You see, people are not aware. I was not aware. So I saw, okay, they want to be, let them be. Yeah. Oh, uh, Laura says, are there tests for cholesterol or kidney function or anything else that a person can get and use at home? Cholesterol, I believe that they have come around with uh, testing your cholesterol at home, but I don't know which lab is uh, giving this. But uh, as far as uh, what was the other thing, the cholesterol and the kidney function. Yeah. Are there any home tests? I, I... Uh, you know, you can do a urinary protein, the strips and all that, but nothing more that I know of that can be done at home. But I think we should be able to get it soon. Pretty but, soon with Zoom, we, we probably won't have to go to the doctor very much unless he has to listen to something or look at something. You know something? I am enjoying telemedicine much more than direct contact. 
because I have my own, the reasons being, I have more time with my patient, number one. Number two, I only have to worry about what I dress above my belt. <laughs> Absolutely. On my shorts, and I use a glass like this, of course, I'm kidding, but this can be beer. <laughs> and they won't know. So what, what's, what's your, what, do you, what, what is next for you? Uh, next for me is to, uh, I think I will be, as I said, uh, running the half marathon, but I missed the uh, base camp in uh, the Himalayas. Uh, but I, I, I don't really know, but I'm, again, I'm liking uh, telemedicine, but I need to meet my patients who are saying, Dr. Teher, when are you going to come back? And I have to be there and see them, you know. So I think I'll be going there more often. And uh, I would love any adventure, any of your readers, any of your listeners have an adventure for this old man, please let me know. If it is also just a rocking chair, it's good for me. <laughs> Don't mind the team. <laughs> no, but I would love to. I mean, I do my things. Uh, I learned in 10 years how to do a headstand without support. So I, I can learn at this stage. I don't know, the mind feels clearer. And, and I, did I tell you one thing that after I turned for health reason, a vegan, yeah. I started wondering about animal rights. I started wondering about why? Because my mind became clearer. And I want to change. I want to let everybody. There is a nice thing we did at health uh, that is over there run by a good friend of mine. Uh, what's his name now? Uh, but he, he's got We Did It Health, where we are trying to collect 1 million signatures. Of, oh, um, Peter Goldstein? Peter Goldstein. Oh, he's booked on the show next month. Oh, wow, 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 wow. He, he had asked me to uh, say that about the 1 million. So any of your viewers are uh, vegans. Please go ahead and uh, put yourself down there. There's a one question they ask, and you can put yourself if you are a healthy vegan, because we are a little worried about, Peter and I are a little worried about that there can be a lot of junk food vegans who may also be in there. So I'm trying to figure out, that's my next project uh, with Peter, that I'm trying to figure out how to change the junk food vegans into healthy vegans. Yeah, that's a hard one because it's the pleasure trap because sugar, fat, and salt is addictive, whether it's vegan or not vegan. And that's that's why people are so drawn in, I think. Correct, correct. But but then you are you are you are doing exactly the things that you're not supposed to do for health reasons. For the other two reasons, you're doing fantastic. But your health is going to go down the tubes. Yeah. I, so my I, point is that we've got to change those unhealthy vegans, junk food vegans into healthy vegans. It's hard because they don't want to hear the health message and they actually sometimes get upset about it. So I, I that's why I just I do my thing. And, you know, I was a junk food vegan for 26 years. I mean, that stuff's delicious, by the way, but it's not health promoting. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you are, you're just wonderful. And I, the reason I'm keeping you on so long is your, your voice is mesmerizing. So maybe consider a podcast. Where do you spend most of your time if people want to connect with you? Cause you've, you've given us all your social media links. They're already in the show notes, but is there one particular place if people want to get more of you that they can let, find you? Let me make this a very important statement, which I don't do, but I, I don't care anymore. If somebody cannot get to their primary health doctor, and cannot find him or he's busy or whatever, he or she is busy. Here is my number, 256-441-4140. Please do not phone me the first time, send me a text and say that I saw you on uh, Chef AJ's show and I have this problem, I'm in a bind and I'll be able to help them out. Wow, you are amazing. That wow, you hope you don't get 400 calls right away, but thank you so much. Okay, yeah. so Jojo said 
her, was her mistake because she, I guess she's in Australia. The readings are differently are, are different. She brought her total cholesterol down from two five nine to one three seven with a whole food plant based diet. She's type one diabetic. HbA1c is six point two and 52, maybe 52 is her age. And so she wanted to know if she should consider taking, start taking statins. No. In my opinion, you are not uh, diabetic type two. This is your genetic, this thing. You are taking, she must be on insulin, of course. And uh, you do not have to worry about with your whole food plant-based diet. You should not be worried about your vessels because your endothelial lining is going to be intact. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to eat? My favorite thing to eat is um, probably a uh, jackfruit uh, burger, which has got again, an earthy taste. And I make a beautiful spinach with tomatoes and garlic and uh, my wife just made fennel this afternoon. But uh, these these are, you see again, when you get older, you just look at a few dishes. Yeah. That's, That's I, the advantage that we have. We old people like, you know, if they say restaurants and I say, okay, let's go to a vegan restaurant. And then again, in a vegan restaurant, when I order something that's full of oil, I know. It's so, it's so, you know, when you get away from oil, it's really gross. It really is. So that's that's the thing. But I, 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 I'm so happy that I came onto your show. And uh, I would love to, love to help people out in any way. And if I can uh, be of any use to you, uh, Chef AJ, in the future, please don't hesitate. Calling well, on. I, of course, I got your number now, so I won't. And everyone, I encourage you to support Dr. Or Uncle Dr. <laughs> Akil by getting this wonderful book, even before it gets on Amazon. It's a steal today on Kindle. I can tell you that right now. As Sherry says, I love this man. And Dina says she'd love to run a marathon with you. Oh, lovely, lovely. When is it? I don't know. Maybe she's in Canada, so she's going to have to get to Atlanta. You know, this question from Sherry, this is uh, it's a it's a really a smaller question with and a bigger question if you don't have a plant based doctor. But she says, how do you convince a doctor why you don't want to take statins? You get a plant based doctor so that you don't have to convince them. Yeah, but, but the point is that, you know, if you can tell your doctor, you're not going to die in six months time if you stop taking statins. Let him realize that, okay, I'm stopping the statins. Do my blood work in four months' time or six months' time. And if it is going up, okay, I'll listen to you and take the statins. But if it is going down or it is neither going up or down, then why simply take chemicals in your body? We have doctors for heart transplants and kidney transplants and lung transplants. And when you have an acute appendicitis, yes, I'm not going to tell my patient, take a carrot stick. Of course, I will work on the patient or somebody who's having a heart attack. I've got to work on that patient immediately. That's consequence of the disease. But I'm wondering that why should I be in a place looking after a heart disease patient when he should not be having a heart disease or a coronary artery disease? Right. Nice. Well, it's just been such a pleasure getting to know you. I am so happy. I'm thrilled to death that I've been on the show. And so I will, I thank everybody, all the viewers and listeners, all the best to you and my love to you. Namaste and with a vegan sign. Um, thank you, uncle. Oh, <laughs> gonna, you can call me auntie. That's what I'm going to call you. For yeah, we cannot. We are too young. You have to be called a niece. Really? But they, the, the person in the chat said if you were over 50 in India, you could be called auntie or uncle. You're over 50? I'm 62. I'm an old lady. Why am I on a young girl's show? <laughs> you're, you're adorable. You, we will have to have you back. So guys, get the book. Open your heart. 
and get the book. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. We have another fabulous doctor tomorrow. When he was on the first time, you guys would not let him go. His name is Dr. Peter Rogers. And he's going to continue talking about some of these lifestyle diseases like atherosclerosis, hypertension, 